Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're diving back into some more Create Above and Beyond. Oh boy, today is going to be fun. We have basically all of our stuff set up semi-automated, and uh, today I wanna get it even further in production. I don't know if we're gonna 100% have everything fully automated within this tier, or this age, I guess you can call it, but I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna try my best to get it as, as close as possible. Um, and then we can start unlocking things later on. As you can see right now, I have cured rubber. Of course, I've been doing this on the side. It's been very easy to just sort of throw it in as needed. And we get ourselves some belts this way. And this is gonna open up a lot. This is, this is honestly gonna open up a lot. I have a section right here and I'm going to go ahead and apply a belt to it. Belts are pretty cool. They can actually transfer uh, the kinetic power, the, the rotation, two adjacent um, shafts, which is pretty cool. So if I extend that, of course, that shaft is now spinning. So that's pretty cool, right? And I think in the latest update of Create, um, I, before these belts used to actually cause a drag on your network. So on our current power, um, we only have so much torque or so much uh, power that we can extend to machines. And I'm pretty sure belts in the latest update was removed from causing strain on a system. I, I'm, I'm, maybe you guys can correct me on that, but I think that it was, but anyways, you can actually use belts regardless to transfer power. Um, but the reason I'm setting up belts today is because I want to get deployers set up on this bad boy. And there we go. There's a deployer. We need three deployers because we're really close, really, really close to having this automated. Now this isn't going to stay here, but it is going to be a nice temporary place so I can make these here instead of doing them in a crafting table, which is a lot more painful and a lot more resource uh, costly. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split andesite uh, alloy in this one and andesite alloy in this one. And this is actually gonna hold andesite alloy. Um, now I could set this and filter it. I'm not worried about it right now, um, simply because we do have these filtered, but you can filter your, your result. And then I also need to go grab that saw that we've been using for all of our manual crafting and then I just basically give this a saw so I just give it to it like that and as you can see it now has a saw and uh, at the moment there's really nothing for it to do so it's it's in stationary mode but if I give this some slabs right now and let's just say we give it 32 slabs because I do have enough to do 32 of these I throw those on there and uh, in reality, I would have a machine over here so they wouldn't actually get stuck. I would have a chest and that chest would only throw out one slab at a time. But we can actually use this to get an idea of why we need slabs. And this is actually gonna talk a little bit about this. It, it, it takes us down to slabs and it's gonna explain a little bit why uh, just by setting this up. And we can see this is gonna be our ultimate automation that we need to get set up right here. So now we can sort of work backwards and figure out how we're gonna get certain things here so that way this becomes basically automated. So let's get into even more craziness here. So um, I've kind of devised a little bit of a setup here to get a belt running from this chest over here. So my idea is to have this chest spit out with an andesite funnel, some oak logs, which I have set up here, and that is gonna run through these saws, and I'm gonna show you how these are gonna work because they're, they are kind of confusing if you mess up. Um, and that's going to basically run down a conveyor belt. I'm gonna go from here all the way here. As you can see, I had to extend the gearbox here, the setup, so that way we can get the belts going in the right direction. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but for now this will work. And then I can actually extend this power even further, which is all running from this water wheel, by the way, and extend it to power these saw blades in theory, so long as these saw blades are, are powerful enough. Um, now, there is a little bit of an issue. So let me go ahead and show you by just using cogwheels here. So if I use cogwheels, oh, we're overstressed. Okay, so we've actually hit a point where there is too much currently running in our system to be able to just use that water wheel, which is fine. If I go ahead and pull this off, you can see it's now normal. And apparently this is running through it. <laughs> I need to figure out something to turn off temporarily. Um, that way I can demonstrate this, but still. Let's go ahead and get our saw back up and running. 
Did my soul just disappear? No, my soul is completely fine. It was <laughs> it's in my inventory. All right, so if I turn something off that is using power right now, for example, if I get rid of this, that should relieve some stress from our system. And uh, now we should be able to put this cogwheel over here and give ourselves a bit more room. So cogwheel, let's put you right here. And I want to, I just wanted to use this as a demonstration. So let's, let's assume that we're going to have a log come off of here. And that log is going to land on this and start working. It's going the right way, right? Until it hits here. So basically this will run backwards if, yeah, if it ends up doing this. And so what we have to do is actually extend this, uh, most likely with a gearbox. That's usually a good way to do this. And we can take another gear if we want um, and extend it to power that. I mean, it's really not difficult. Cogwheels actually work really good for this. Um, however, we do need to power this area as well. So if I extend a cog and a cog there, we're good. What I could do also is this right here. So I could just extend with actual shafts here and here, and that'll look a lot better. And then I'll put a gear here. So now everything is running the right, right way, but we're ending up with these weird bits and bobs from DecoCraft is what it's from. Like, what is, what is that? <laughs> Like all weird like decoration stuff that we can use. So we actually have to set a very specific recipe filter inside here. And to do that, we just take the item that we want it to produce. Since it can produce several different things, it can act as a stone cutter, those saws can, and it can also act as a way to cut wood. So all I need to do is take this and turn it into slabs and then set that as the slab filter. I was experimenting with this in my test world and yeah, this was a, an issue. I was like, how do I fix that? I was like, oh, that's right. They can actually be filtered. <laughs> so with that done, let's put this here. Even though this is going to start spitting stuff out. I don't want that to do that, but we'll deal with it now. And then this um, needs to be facing the other direction. Just like that. And that's going to start spitting the logs out. And as you can see, we have somewhat automated these slabs. And so those are going to work their way over here. Um, like I said, though, this needs to be removed <laughs> as these, these things are going to get into getting just thrown away for now. Later on, these actually might be useful for building and stuff, but yeah, these are, these are just like, I think a mess just to get in the way to be like, ah, look, you're a carpenter, but you can't use them. So yeah, it should stop right here. And because it can't move any further, the only thing that's going to happen is this chest is going to fill up, which is, is fine for now. By the way, real quick, I want to thank, thank those who, uh, who told me that, oh yeah, you can use regular andesite, by the way, um, to do some of these other projects. I, I thought you, or uh, you can use andesite cobble because I thought it was andesite stone. So I wish I would have known that sooner because I've been smelting, I've been smelting the andesite cobble thinking that I actually needed, uh, the andesite stone instead of, and you can use both. But oh well, I'm glad I got the, the setup going down below because I honestly like the smooth versions better. So I'm starting to get the next section set up. Basically what I need to do is I need to mix um, basically kelp. So we're, we're gonna have to get kelp mixed up and clay. So I'm reworking my clay production because I know even it, it even says here, it says at the bottom, like make sure that you don't have any bottlenecks, especially quote unquote clay. So I'm assuming clay is going to become a bottleneck and I've already kind of noticed that. Um, so I'm going to have clay basically quadrupled. So I have four of them set up. We could always add more. My plan is for it to run across the conveyor belt, jump here because when it's done on a conveyor belt, hopefully it lands here. If not, I may be able to put something else here, but it should be able to push it along this belt and it needs to be blown at least three spaces across the belt in order for it to turn into clay, which should give it plenty of room to be able to make it here. Um, and then I noticed on the belt here, there's a little area that, that kind of is shoved off. I'm hoping this automatically filters out the process based on the, the recipe filter. If not, this is where it's going to be a little bit tricky without automated um, filters. It's, it's really going to be tricky to, to get the actual product 
um, out of here without doing it by hand. So that's that's where that's going to be a, a, a thing I'm going to test once I get this running. So I have most of the belt set up. I have everything basically running. We just got to get power to this little setup. And then there's also going to be another setup over here that's going to be um, cooking the product. So hopefully we'll have a setup that'll cook it. And it should inevitably end up being added to this. So we should end up having two separate lines uh, that are splitting andesite. So we also need to get andesite up here. And that's going to be a whole other project. Getting the andesite from down below underground all the way up here, which we have a couple different solutions to that and we'll see what we can use. So I think to power this, I'm gonna use a different power source this time. I'm actually gonna go with a windmill bearing and I should be able to extend this off this way. Actually, that needs to be not shifted and clicked. I have a really hard time getting used to the shifting and clicking. Um, and then we should be able to use a radial chassis to get the windmill going. So if I place the radial chassis on here, and then of course, right click, the contraption will con assemble. Um, and then I believe I can just hook the cells up to the side. And I would prefer to go like eight off the side. And you can make this look, you know, however you want. Um, one, two, three. I think this the more you have, the better it's gonna be. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll go, we can go from there. Like one, two, three. And then it's gonna go into the dirt here, which is unfortunate. I don't, however, want it to pick up the dirt, if that makes sense. So, really, actually, no, I'm, I, I could have shortened this up. So yeah, I basically just need to extend this all off the sides. I just wanna make sure it doesn't pick any of the ground up when I turn it on, um, because, yeah, that'll be kind of a pain. Yeah, same on this side. Just gonna keep placing them. I like how it kind of gives you direction. Look at that. So I can just, oh, other than doing that, I can sort of just place them in the direction I'm kind of looking. It gives, it makes it a lot easier to build this thing. Um, I'm actually gonna tear this down and build it one higher just so I can fit it all in here. So there we go, after turning it on, all I had to do was after I built it, I just right click the windmill bearing. And as you can see, it is rotating and doing its thing. Um, now to turn this off, you can use a lever. So if you wanna modify it, you can of course use that. But it is now generating some rotational energy, which is perfect. Um, I did turn this so it's in a different direction. But what I can do is I'll actually extend this down and then I will just use a shaft down in the bottom to make this look a little bit better. Right, And then I'll extend the power into the front. Even though it's setting in the back, it will eventually, yeah, all the power is gonna move to the front. It's not the be most beautiful thing in the world, but it gets the job done. So after a bunch of trial and error, I finally got this thing, I believe, working. So the windmill is now speeding up. I have a speed up uh, gear ratio thing set up here. Um, that's running down to speed up the belts over here, which are funneling in from our strainers. Um, and then I'm down ratioing again over here the uh, the actual conversion for our sand to clay because I wanted to convert here before getting on the belt. Um, so there you go. It now converts into clay before jumping onto the belt. Still takes a little bit to get there, but that's fine. I'm also using weighted ejectors, which are really, really cool, by the way. You uh, shift click on the place you want it to jump to and uh, it'll actually project the item there which is really, really fun. So I actually use those because the belts that I had set up weren't going to cut it. They don't actually shoot the items up there. So that's doing its job on both sides, as you can see. Boom, these are really fun. They also need power, by the way. So everything's being powered off this water or off this windmill. The only thing I am, I'm, I'm worrying about is this here because the output recipe, I'm noticing they're not, the items are not spilling out. So I'm hoping the only the outputted recipe is going to do that. Um, so to get that going, I need to get the mixer in and I also need to get power to that. Um, so I need to get this geared up, which this is, you know, going at an okay speed, but I'm thinking it's going to need to be gear ratioed up, almost guaranteed. Um, so if I put this here and I start the, I start the ratio, 
I should be able to get it to here, hopefully. Actually, I can probably ratio from here. Um, you start large, right? That's spinning. And then I put a smaller one. I don't think I can get up there. I, I need to put a smaller one on the side here. And then a larger cog going up one. Ooh, I'm not going to have enough space, I don't think. So a larger cog would normally go up. And then you would do a smaller cog on the side. And that would go, that's going pretty quick. And then I can go here. Ooh, that actually works. Oh, and it actually outputs the exact thing I need. Oh, this, that's a lifesaver. This is an absolute lifesaver. The fact that it ejects this particular recipe. I can even set the recipe there just to make sure. Oh, that makes my life so much easier. So things are starting to get a little bit spicy here with all of our gear ratio changes and stuff just to get things going smoothly, right? So I have a conveyor belt that I extended off the side of our already ready to go like processing belt. And now I have it smelting things down and producing the, uh, it's the alga block or alga brick. Um, and then this is going to set on top of a insight casing. And then I'll get a chest here temporarily just so we can store this while we work on our other setups. Um, so this will just get stored. So it should smelt. As you can see, it smelts right there. I have this conveyor belt running extra slow just so it has time to actually smelt. But it looks like things are running pretty good, which I'm I'm kind of satisfied with. Yeah, even the uh, even this is running well. I think we're actually right at the speed where we need to be. So remember that Andeside farm? Y yeah, so uh, <laughs> it's way down here and we actually need to get up the supplies and that's basically all we have left, right? Uh, to be able to automate this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I've sort of done the math here. I've got to dig myself a hole. Yeah, a, a, quite a quite a big hole, actually. Got to go all the way down to bedrock and needs to be this exact size, which actually works out. Um, and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. We're going to be utilizing a pulley. Fortunately, I don't have a shovel on me. I probably should have made one of those. But anyways, it's going to it's going to utilize a pulley. And we might have to come up with some sort of clever, clever idea as far as automating the ups and downsies of that lever or that said pulley. So at the moment, I have this going in here, <laughs> being smelted, this going up, then this dropping down here. But this layer right here is actually kind of special in that what's on it should be able to be lifted up with a pulley. Um, so I can actually stop. This will actually drop an item or hopefully stop dropping items on the ground because that was something I actually didn't account for is what is it, what, what happens when this isn't being actually ran. Um, and I was thinking about using uh, like the mechanical pulley thing, um, the one that is used for contraptions. The problem is if I use the one for contraptions, I'm, I, I don't know if it'll connect or is, is there a way to get it out of there? I don't actually know. So let's go ahead and set up the pulley at least and let's see if we can't get some power run up to this pulley. Uh, I got to probably use a water wheel. Um, we'll see if we can't get some speed on it and try our best to pull this thing up and down. So just to test this out, the items are flowing down there. If I flip this lever, it's going to activate this gear shift, which is going to change the direction and the rotation. So that is going to throw down our rope pulley and that should land right on the center of this block. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it at least will, it'll make it so we don't have to go up and down for our items. We can just literally request it here and hopefully a, there'll be a way to automate it. We can use redstone signals potentially to do that. Um, there is a redstone that we can get into later on, which is going to make the automation easier on this, or we might just end up going with old fashioned carts carts probably would be the best thing. Okay. So now that it's connected here, if I run this, it should come back up. I'm noticing it's not coming back up, which means potentially things need to be glued, I'm guessing. So I was wondering if I glued this andesite funnel to this funnel here, 
Maybe we can definitely make sure it's no longer like automatically throwing items out. Let's see if pulling this up now that I've glued things down, let's see if it'll actually work. Let's give it a shot. Hit the lever. Oh, things are riding up and it did. It took that with it. Oh, that is gonna make things so much easier then. So this may seem a little bit much, uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this deposit here um, and it should just stay. We shouldn't have to worry about it, I don't think, but the conveyor is running. As you can see, I have this also helping it run. This is running and running and running all the way down. Bam, to this and believe it or not, this takes us all the way up top, right where we really need it most. So it, it drops off right here, but I do need to kind of situate this in a weird way so we can actually filter out the particular types of stone. And we're gonna actually do that I believe we should be able to do it with uh, the storage drawers mod. So to get drawers, we make ourselves some trim and then apparently we can put this inside of a saw and the trim can be turned into upgrade parts and regular storage drawers. That's interesting. I kind of, I kind of like the idea of that ish because I mean, honestly, trim is pretty cheap uh, minus zinc. And then usually these would require, require four chests just to be able to make the two by two drawers. So, I mean, these, these only require one chest, I guess. Uh, maybe it maths out somewhere. I have no idea. Um, but I also need a key. Uh, let's see, are we able to actually make the storage drawer key? Cause I'm really hope we can. This is what we need, the storage drawer key. And yeah, it just requires an upgrade template. And from the looks of that, that is just a drawer, right? Uh, it looks like there are just some trim. And then the trim can be used to make that part. Let's go here. Trim. Yes, we get an upgrade parts. And then the key is going to allow us to lock this thing. And then we can put andesite funnels and stuff on it. By the way, what quest stuff have we unlocked? Lifesavers. Ooh, drawers. Oh, we just got upgrade templates for that. Oh, man. How cheeky. All right. One, two, three. Because we do need some nuggets and storage drawer key. Bam, that is gonna make filtering a little bit easier. However, I still need andesite funnels, but all I gotta do is extend this belt now. Uh, forget that this is here because this will disappear, but I'm gonna extend the belt and the last thing that I'm gonna have on this drawer line, um, which I can have a drawer here. Actually, I'm gonna turn this around just because it'll be a little easier to face it later. We are gonna have a belt line on the other side. So there will be a belt going here. I don't know why I didn't use an ax for that. So this will be the four different types of materials that we're getting. Last one is going to be the andesite and that is going to be locked. And then we'll output from there and hopefully be able to get everything over onto this conveyor belt and get ourselves some split andesite. That is going to be the key. So let's go ahead and throw this on here and test it out. I know you guys are super, super stoked for this. Plop this out and there we go. So this is going to speed off of this belt that should all run downstream end up on those belts good good looking all good here and let's head up top and check out exactly what's going on up here so what i have done is i have andesite funnels and then on the back side they can only accept certain items so as you can see they're going to start filling up this and then once it goes to the other material then of course that's gonna end up going into one of the other filters eventually and a site's gonna end up here. And then all we have to do is put a funnel on this particular drawer and then also have this in line with this and we are going to have some fun running this into another basin. So this should get the job done and a side funnel here, making sure to pull out this particular item, make sure to pull out that particular item and then make sure these all can go inside here. And then that's basically it. And then we need to have a conveyor that outputs from here. Doesn't need to be very long because we're also going to need to set it up into a very particular setup that is going to have to split things. So let's talk about that. Now, I would love to say that I have successfully automated tier one production of materials but we technically don't have this section fully automated. Let's just put it that way. Like it's not 100% ready to go. 
Um, I can go ahead, however, and let's say, for example, oh, did I do this? I did this one off. Oh no. Well, actually, no, I didn't. I, I can actually, I can, I can make do with this. Okay, perfect. Anyways, um, what I was saying is I basically have this right now automated. Like this is ready to go. Um, there, we, we are missing just a couple of things, however. So if I put these, actually, let's get the belts on first. Um, once I have these set up, which this just needs to align to here and this align to here and then hook these together. So all I have to do is I can probably just utilize a gear here. So if I put this in here, this comes out and what I can do is this one. I'm sort of learning this. We can put a con. Actually, you know what? Let's just use a belt. <laughs> Let's just use a belt. That's going to be so much easier to go ahead and transfer our rotational power. And then I can put this here and this here, and that's going to keep these filled. And look at this automation, right? Well, not a hundred percent. Now this is definitely automated. This is working. However, we have this product down here, semi automated, and that's only because we have a lot of stuff to work on later on down the road. So I can go ahead and send this down. This is going to stop that funnel. Send this down and it can go ahead and load up all of the resources that we're going to need for the future. So at least this is going to give it enough time in order to process these materials. And then I can set that to come back up here later. And I mean, honestly, <laughs> this is a conveyor belt line. Like, that's awesome. That is producing the kinetic mechanisms. And I got it done today. I mean, I'm, I would have to say not a whole lot of trouble, honestly. Just uh, maybe several hours. I think I spent about five hours today on this. Working on getting all of this up and running. And honestly, I am learning so much about this. I am, I mean, honestly, so much is being learned here. So I can tell you guys what a crazy, crazy adventure today. All of the stuff that we got done, mm, it's like mwah, perfect. It's not beautiful. Of course, it's not gonna be beautiful, not yet. Not till we can start to compact things. Oh my God, am I gonna die? <laughs> I wanted to get these guys killed because there's actually uh, quest stuff related for killing the captain here. Get out of here. There we go, voluntary exile. Drink our milk. I don't want that to affect me right now, but we need to get the banner. Yeah, there's actually, there should be a quest turn in for the market, I think. But anyways, I, of course, however, want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And that, my friends, is, of course, going to go to... Xenaros, thank you so much for your amazing support over on the Discord. Becoming a Discord Premium member, I absolutely appreciate you. Thank you so much. And of course, guys, if you're interested in joining the Discord, all you have to do is find the link down in the description below, or you can go to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. I would love to see you over there on our Discord and hang out with me. Of course, I do hang out in the voice channels and all kinds of stuff all the time. You'll definitely find me there. Pretty active, <laughs> pretty active. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you haven't, already seen i do live stream over at twitch so you can also find me there twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect i have been streaming some satisfactory so if you like this stuff you'll really like satisfactory so i'll see you guys in the next episode and as always thanks for watching